Hey everybody, hope you're doing well, hope you're staying safe. Today isn't a news day, it's a one-off comparison between how I thought Universal Orlando handled its reopening of City Walk and how Disney handled its reopening of Disney Springs. So we've had, uh, Universal Orlando's been open for over a week now. Disney Springs only opened last Wednesday. I was at both reopenings on almost minute one of day one of both and I just want to give you my thoughts on how they, they, they both handled those reopenings. So the arrival experience, both into multi-storey car parks, um, in Universal Orlando you park your car on, on one of like five levels, level three is where you get into the parks and that's where they have the temperature check. Remembering that they've got the walkways, the moving walkways, the travelators at, um, at Universal they lined people up kind of parallel to the walkway at six feet intervals and then there was a temperature check they opened at 4 p.m on the dot on wednesday um, was that the best thing to do probably not in hindsight they could have let people maybe in a little bit earlier even if the stores didn't open till four at least they would have had people moving through and not had any backlog of people there was quite a backlog after 4 p.m we were there at maybe 3.40 and we were certainly not first in that line and there were people backing up behind us. People were respecting generally the six foot um, social distancing. The temperature check took you know, a couple of seconds and you were through. Then it was the usual security check at in the rotunda at uh, Universal and then you were through into, into um, City Walk. In Disney Springs, uh, again, it's like a five level, six level multi-storey car park you come in at level two i parked on level two and then you were corralled around a corner by the elevators and then round a kind of hairpin bend and into the temperature check so there was quite a lot of space there if you needed to back people up you could do there was nobody there when i when i got there i got there at probably half past nine on wednesday and this week and there was nobody there what they'd done is they'd opened up early they were due to open at 10 a.m they opened up I don't know what time but I just walked straight into the temperature check took a couple of seconds as per Universal and you were through no bag check at Universal Springs uh, sorry, no bag check at Disney Springs remember um, they don't seem to have an issue with people just walking around as they would a shopping mall with a bag there's no security checks at shopping malls in Orlando and there isn't at Disney Springs the reason there's a security check at Universal Orlando is because it actually opens up into the parks as well. Once you're into the in, in through that security check, you're then into City Walk, Islands of Adventure, and Universal Orlando. It's not like Disney, where Disney Springs is separate completely. You've got security checks at each of the four parks and the water parks, so and Volcano Bay at at um, Universal is separate. So you do have a security check there. Um, okay, so that was the arrival experience. Very very similar, easy enough and only a kind of dark mark against Universal for maybe not having the forethought to open up a little bit early but that's by the by. Um, so City Walk opened up with only three restaurants and maybe four or five retail outlets so I think they opened up actually a little bit early. There wasn't a ton of people there but I'm told that there were queues of 2.5 to 3 hours for a restaurant um, I'm glad that we, when we went in we headed straight for Bubba Gump so as soon as you, you come through off the uh, moving walkways and then you, in the enter City Walk, Bubba Gump's is just on your left hand side. We were starving anyway but we thought there might be an issue with only three restaurants because we didn't know how many people were going to be there. The restaurants only opened at 25% capacity so it was kind of obvious that there could be an issue in getting something to eat later on. Don't forget that they're only open 4pm to 10pm at City Walk right now. So you know, three restaurants were going to fill up fairly quickly. Um, we were second into Bubba Gump's, didn't have a problem. When we came out, after spending maybe 45 minutes, an hour in there, there was a line outside. It wasn't humongous, but I guess it built up over time. And we were able to just wander around. Uh, Disney Springs opened with 44 food and beverage outlets and stores out of about 150. So, you know, almost a third of the entire place was open, which meant that there was a lot more for people to do and a lot more food and beverage outlets for people to eat and drink at. So I think Disney did very, very well there. The, 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 their week, their additional week in taking the time to, I guess, make sure that there were more than just a handful of things open 
stood them in good stead. Um, and I, I saw no real issues in, uh, in in having people eating and drinking there. When when places did open, they didn't open up until 11 o'clock, and Earl of Sandwich or I only opened at 11.30, and there was a big line at, at uh, Earl of Sandwich. Um, and I'll go into that a bit more in a bit more detail because they didn't do quite as well as they could have done. Um, so Universal City Walk, I think, could have maybe if they'd have taken that extra week and opened up a day before or the same day as Disney, I think they would have done much better. I'm not sure ex exactly what's open there now, but I, I hope that there's more there than there was. Otherwise, they're going to face this problem every night, I guess. Um, Disney Springs easy peasy for them 44 outlets there wasn't a big problem people love to eat don't they so there was lines outside every eatery going back to Earl of Sandwich that didn't up until 11.30 there was a long line it was actually back to World of Disney which is I don't know 50 yards away with people keeping their distance and then they only had one register open they have one person taking orders and then they had one register open well the first people to go in had a problem with their credit card and it probably took them five minutes to get through that problem so everybody that was outside remember it, it was about 90 degrees that day no shade and i'm sure people were getting fairly irate even in those opening five minutes thinking what's going on here so i mean they really could do with more than one person taking orders and they could definitely do with at least two registers open but I think they learned from that teething, that teething problem and I hope they've sorted that out. You can't get your drinks yourself now in any restaurant. Where you've got a soda self-serve machine, they're not self-serve anymore. They've got at least one cast member or team member taking your order and giving you that drink. You still can get refills but you have to go back to them. There was an issue in, in Earl of Sandwich that they didn't really know, people didn't know where the line for sandwiches were to pick up, because you get a buzzer, don't forget, and where the lines for drinks were, they were kind of intermingled, and one guy got quite irate about that, only one. Again, they only had one person on the drinks, and they soon sorted that out. It was a problem for a little while, but then a couple of management guys jumped in, so there was three, and that line went down very, very quickly. And once they got that line down, it was good. So again, teething problems, I don't want to over-egg the issues because I'm sure that after that time there'll have been debriefs after day one the managers would have got together and said okay this is what we could do better both at Universal and at Disney and I'm sure they did on that next day I will go back to both of those places maybe next weekend just to check out how good they are doing now and I know that there are more outlets opening in each and I just want to I want to go back and make sure that, that things have changed so how did people behave in City Walk and in Disney Springs. As far as I was concerned, in City Walk, no real issues at all. Everybody, by, by maybe, a, maybe a couple of people, had their masks on. A couple of kids in a, in, a, in a buggy I saw didn't have, and they were probably more than the three-year-old, sorry, the two-year-old cutoff, and in fact, they were definitely over two years old. But, you know, what are you gonna do with small kids? And I didn't see any cast members, sorry, any team members at, at Universal really trying to enforce any mask wearing so if you you know a couple of people had it under their nose um all cast members sorry all team members had their masks on no issue at all people in the restaurants all the servers had masks on it like wasn't an issue um in disney again most people had masks on i saw a guy walking around filming with no mask on because i guess he he could get a you know, better audio with no mask on and they they do have cast members there it dressed in orange and blue guiding people with the regulations but this guy walked straight past one of them and she didn't say a thing now whether they've whether they've been told not to cause a scene or what i don't know and the other way you seem to be able to get around wearing a mask is by having a beer in your hand or a drink in your hand i saw a couple just wandering through masks down under their chins with beers in their hand and that seemed to be a free ticket to not having to wear your mask so if you can nurse a beer for an hour or not just get buy another beer but that does seem to be a way that you can flout the rules i don't agree with that um all right look it's not going to be great having to pull your mask up to take a sip of beer but i, th I really don't know what to do with that it just seems to be non-enforceable if, if you get in with your mask on and that's mandatory you have to wear a mask to get in once you're in it seems like you can kind of do what you want and that's not great if if they want you to wear a mask wear a mask but you know that's that's what you can do that's what it appears you can do if you don't want to wear a mask um 
were there any differences between how cast members and team members um, behaved in the different places? And not really. I, th I think I did see a lot more cleaning going on at Disney, if I'm honest, uh, than 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 I did see at um, at City Walk. Maybe that's because I was just walking around, and there was a you know City Walk is a lot smaller than Disney Springs, and maybe there were just more people doing cleaning where they didn't need that many people at City Walk. So maybe I'm maybe I'm giving uh, City Walk a bad rap there. Um, but the, look, there was cleaning going on, and a lot of cleaning in both places. So, yeah, I think they did the best they could do, probably, um, given the situation that they didn't know how many people were going to turn up, how people were going to react to the enforcement of wearing masks and temperature checks. Everybody complied generally, and I'm sure they've learned from it, and I'm sure they've got better since then, and I'm sure they're getting better every day. So, thumbs up generally to both City Walk and Disney. If I have to sway, if you ask me, so which one did better, I'm going to have to say Disney, but only by a smidge. You know, there really wasn't much in it at all. And I certainly didn't feel afraid in going to City Walk. Um, it wasn't like City Walk was bad and Disney was good. You know, it was by a degree. So I would encourage people, if you're in the area, don't feel afraid to go to either of these. Um, now, just coming on to, we've got parks opening in eight days or seven days. If this goes out on Monday, then seven days time is going to be the 1st of June and that's when the three parks for Universal open. So Islands of Adventure, Universal Orlando, Universal Studios and Volcano Bay all open that day for team member soft openings. First and second team member soft openings. Third and fourth is invited guests. They haven't yet said whether it's uh, annual pass holders or real invited guests only. And then the fifth, it's open to the public. And again, it appears that it's not going to be an RSVP. Tell them if you're coming with, a, if you're an annual pass holder, you just turn up and once they fill up, they fill up, is what it appears to be. Uh, that may change. I, I still can't understand why they would be taking that stance unless they just think, well, we haven't got that many annual pass holders, it'll be fine. You know, most people are going to be working next Monday. Tomorrow is uh, Memorial Day. Next Monday is just any other ordinary working day. So I guess unless a lot of people are taking staycations, they won't be, um, they won't be at, at um, Universal. I did try and do a, a dummy booking today just to see if they were opening the hotels on the 1st of June. It's, it appears that they are. The night of the 1st of June appears to be booked up almost solid. All I could get was a suite at like $1,400. So there does, there does appear, at least at Hard Rock, that there's a lot of people going to be in that hotel. I didn't look at Portofino or Royal Pacific or any of the other hotels, but maybe there's going to be more people there that, than they think there are. But there are three parks to go through, and I guess if they fill up at one, they'll, um, they'll go to another one. Maybe they won't have the Hogwarts, Hogwarts Express going between the two parks so that they can actually understand how many people are in one park at the time. And, I'm, and, and we know that they're opening under capacity. They can only open up at 50% capacity. I believe that, that Universal are going to open up at less than 50% capacity. So let's see exactly. There might be more news coming out in the, you know, in the intervening seven days between now and, and when they open. Um, no news yet from Disney about when they're opening. I still hear, well, I'm hearing today that they have signed a deal with the NBA to play all the remaining games at the Wild Wild wide world of sports at Disney and that means they're going to block book a lot of rooms in Disney World Resorts. What does that mean for the public? When does that mean that the parks and resorts are going to open up for the public? Um, they're only taking resort bookings from the July the 1st but they haven't yet taken out people from I think it's the 10th of June now through to the 30th of June. Their uh, reservations are still holding strong so I don't know whether they're going to just start taking those away um, they haven't said when they're going to start playing basketball for the NBA. So a lot of this is unknown stuff at the moment. What we do appear to know is when the parks do open, it's going to be mandatory masks. It's going to be mandatory temperature, temperature checks. There is going to be social distancing in place. Um, Universal have said it's virtual lines all the way. And then there's six foot queuing in the lines once you get to, to your turn in virtual lines. It is going to be um, ordering your food on an app and then picking it up. 
they are going to accept cash at some locations but I believe not all locations when you ride it's going to be with your party there's no single riders and you're not going to be mixed up with other parties so they are going to distance you from other people um, Disney they haven't told us what's going on yet but that's pretty much what's happened in in uh, Shanghai Disneyland so I'm guessing that they're learning every day from Shanghai Disneyland and they're going to put that learning into practice when they do open uh, Walt Disney World whenever that's going to be SeaWorld again they've only said that they're going to open up before the end of June it looks likely that that's going to be early June um, if they were testing Mako last week with people with masks on they're getting ready to open so I think that's going to be you know, first week in June, second week in June latest isn't going to be the end of June um, they haven't really said what they're going to do yet but I'll be keeping a close eye out for any news on that anything that changes with Universal's policies and procedures I'll be keeping an eye out on that and then obviously as soon as Disney say what they're doing I'll bring you that as well but that's it for today, that's a one-off um, if you've enjoyed the video have a look at some others around the, uh, the channel subscribe if you like and hit that notification bell and you'll get this stuff at the moment it's still six days a week I'm probably gonna lay off it a little, in a little while when the news becomes not enough that it becomes daily but then I'll be doing other stuff probably so um, like I say subscribe hit the notification bell and uh, enjoy the channel alright guys I'll see you for the news uh, tomorrow